Welcome back to Anarchy in the Ukulele, the Friday show. Friday show. Um, filmed on Friday. I, ne- I filmed on Friday this week. I nearly said the Friday show live, but it's not. But, it's, not um, it's not live. But it's we're, live. we are on the chat. We're here. Yes. <laughs> we're down there. Yeah. Maybe. I don't oh, know. Probably. We aim to be. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought I'd do a little bit of playing at the beginning of that. Yes. Beautiful playing. On the Barry. On the Barry. Because it's a Barry special. Let's talk Barry. I mean, it's not all the Barry special, but we no. thought we'd do quite a lot of Barry <laughs> stuff. It's just a Barry segment. Um, so, yeah, we're, let's talk baritone. Yeah. We're going to talk a lot about baritone, why play a baritone, how to play a baritone, how yep. to transpose, all those kind of things. Um, we've got a podcast review as well, yep, which is the Utopia yep. podcast with James Hill. Um, and he, at the minute, throughout June, has done a baritone special. Yeah. So every podcast in June is about the baritone. Um, so that fits in a treat. It does. And we'll go, we'll it? go through some of the things that he kind of says in his ideas. Um, and what have you got coming up? I haven't been doing anything to do with baritone because you didn't tell me. Did yeah, no, baritone yeah, I didn't. Know. But I've been listening to Trio by Jake Shimabakuru uh, and Dave Preston and Nola, Nolan, Nolan Verner. Well, you say nothing to do with baritone. Has he got a baritone? Or? Jake once played a baritone. Oh, okay. Once. Once. He I'm probably sure owns a baritone. I'm sure he owns a baritone. Why would he not? Eh? And it probably features on this album. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are three main bits for today. We're going to yes. keep it quite short because if you watched last week's and you watched the premiere of it going up, you didn't know how long it was going to be and it was very it was long. Rather long. It was an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> but it was a good enough special and there was loads of footage. Yeah. Um, I had a lovely time on the chat last week. With yeah, people. so did I. We had loads of people come on the chat and um, people that I'd met at Ganesh. Mm-hmm. So it was really nice. Really enjoyed that. Where should we start? Oh, let's, let's, let's talk baritone. Let's talk baritone. What um, podcast do you really No, let's talk the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I even changed the order around to say podcast first, Sam. Oh, I didn't see that one. Um, so, um, Eutropolis, well, that leads us on to the baritone. It does. So, um, Eutropolis is a podcast with James Hill, mm-hmm. and it's called Eutropolis Ukulele Questions and Answers. Yes. Now, the whole podcast isn't question and answers, as in um, every week necessarily. Yeah. I'd say 90% of it seems to be sort of themed with then questions about that theme. Okay, yeah. Um, but there's occasional interview and things like that with the people on there as well. So it's it's quite a nice little podcast. So are they like listener questions? You submit questions? They, I think they're a combination of listener questions. Mm-hmm. So sometimes he'll read out questions that have been sent in by, from people. But they're also probably just questions that he's constantly asked. Yeah. Asked? Asked. <laughs> asked. <laughs> um, but yeah, constantly asked sort of questions. Yeah. And um, what I really like about it is... On some some videos you watch on YouTube, you get a very generic answer. Mm-hmm. I'd like to say if you ever watch any of our other videos, you never get you get the opposite of a generic. You answer. barely get an answer, really. <laughs> you barely get an answer, or you get the biggest, longest, round the houses answer. Yeah, as possible. And normally, within the last twenty seconds of answering that, we actually get to the yeah the point that makes it really clear. I mean, I only asked you if they were exactly listen to the exactly. Questions. We've just done it. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, they're not, he doesn't give just generic answers that everybody gives. He gives yeah. really kind of strong opinions of his opinion and his experience. Yeah. And I would say they differ mm-hmm. somewhat from the generic answers that you get out there. Well, that's good. Um, it's really good. It makes it, makes it really interesting. They're quite short, little bite size. Yeah. Um, 
episode. So on the baritone one, which I say has been running through June, there's some that are kind of like eight or nine minutes long, some that are 15 okay. minutes long. Um, I listen to the whole lot one after another. Um, one afternoon. <laughs> yeah, well, in one car journey, which is quite nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so baritone, mm-hmm. because he's done a baritone special. And I always like to take something from these podcast reviews that I've learnt. Yeah. So. Yeah, show us. Have learnt this. Teach us. Promise. Um, well, there's lots of things that he talks about. Um, the first things actually that he talks about, I'm going to go through, is reasons for playing baritone. Mm-hmm. And again, there's some generic reasons, and we always say about you know it's great in an ensemble yeah. and things like that, which is one of his reasons. But he goes into a bit more detail about why it's great in an ensemble. Okay. Yeah. And it is something that he says that was a real kind of light bulb moment for me mm-hmm. that I really liked. So we'll go into that in a second. Um, so the reasons that James says, and I wholeheartedly agree, is um, playing solo it instantly gives you another sound option. Yeah. So um, ukulele, when you get down to baritone, I find this as well. So... I'm sure it probably is slightly dependent on the instrument that you're playing. Yeah. Certainly, if you're the standard instrument you're playing. But I find the baritone very mellow. Yes. Um, and I find because it's a slightly louder instrument, yeah. you can play it a little bit quieter, and that makes it even more mellow. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to strum yeah. away at it. Or it's a really very hard. warm instrument. Um, so, particularly if you want to do some finger picking stuff. Mm-hmm. Like seeing at the beginning of this video. Like seeing at the beginning of the video. You get this very sort of mellow sound. Yeah. Even with the back of your finger. Um, but as he points us out as well, and his terminology for this is it also you can make it bark. And I kind of know exactly what he's saying with that, because when we play it in the band and we're strumming mm-hmm. harder, yeah. you can really make a sound with that. one um so yeah i get where it's coming from it's yeah. a versatile instrument and it gives you a different sound than a standard tuning yeah. the, the nearest you get is uh, a tenor ukulele probably with a low g yes and yeah. they can be a little bit mellower at times it'd be close but it'd still be yeah you're still you you're still there uh, out yeah you still this is a lower range so you get that even more mellowous mellowous and um and it's louder so you get that bark if you yeah. need it. So instantly you've got a different sound set. Yeah. Would you be able so if you bought a Barry and you then wanted to play normal ukulele music, could yeah. you just capo it? And you then can, it becomes a Yeah, you can capo if you're doing like a workshop or something and you only have a Barry. Mm-hmm. Um if you don't know your transpositions and things like that yet, the easiest way, and I would say if you're doing a workshop, this is probably the easiest way to do it anyway, is to get a capo and capo across the fifth fact, in which case you are your G, C, E, A, yeah. standard ukulele tuning. Ooh, so you just um, need a barrier, don't you? But yeah. standard ukulele tuning, but mellower. Yeah. Even, even capoed, because of the size of the body. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's his first reason. Second reason, um, allows you to find different option for your voice using the same chord changes. Now, this is what I'm talking about, not giving the generic answers, because I'd never heard this said before. Yeah. I'm sure it has been, but I've never heard it. And again, th- actually, this wasn't the light bulb moment I was thinking of, but this is kind of another one. Yeah. So if, if you've got a standard, you can it So if you're, this is particularly if you're singing. Yeah. So if you're playing, so you're company, accompanying yourself and singing. So let's say you're playing uh, a C chord. And you're singing and it's a bit high for you. La, la, la. Lovely. A bit high for you. <laughs> Put down your standard ukulele. Play your C shape. Mm. on a baritone. Now, this is where it gets a bit contentious because people will say, no, that's a G-shape. You're playing a baritone. 
but it's a C shape on a standard, play the same shape on a baritone. La 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 la. Um, automatically, you've got a lower range to sing in. Yeah. Now, it's only giving you a couple of options, and there's quite a difference between that and this, which we'll go on to in a minute. But you could also capo. Yeah. So if that was just a little bit too high for you, you could capo on the third threat. Yeah. And just bring it down by a couple of notes, which you can't do without changing chord shapes. Yeah. Now, if you're very happy playing your C, A minor, F, G7 chord shapes, you know, E minor, somewhere over the rainbow chords, um, but you're finding it's just a little bit high for you, there's not really much of an option for a beginner without working out, working out in a different key. Yeah. So if I said to you, okay, you want to play C, A minor, F, G, but you need to bring it down, so you need to play B flat, mm. G minor, uh, E flat, yeah. F, that's a much harder set of chords. Yeah. Much, much harder set of chords. You could pick up your barrow, uh, your barrow, your baritone, and cap on the third fret. Threat. Oh my words this morning! Cap on your third. I've been to I've been to school this morning already. You've been to so I've been I've been rushing around. Um, Jesse got his. It's called Dojo Star of the Week, which mm -hmm. means he was a bit of a class star this week. <laughs> he was very happy, Good. and we were very well pleased with him. Well done, Jesse. But did you tell him that he stole our bell? <laughs> no, I haven't told him he stole our bell. We'll come on to that at the end of the video. Um, so, um, yeah, really, really valuable reason for yeah. having a baritone in your arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds wrong. Always keep a baritone in your arsenal. <laughs> that was totally on the test. I'll tell you, it's a good job Abby's not here because she'd be laughing for about 10 she'd, minutes. Oh, she'd one. be crying. And she'd be crying. Um, but yeah, a really good reason that I hadn't particularly thought of for certainly beginner levels, because lots of people don't pick the baritone up until they're really proficient. Yeah. And then they go, oh, okay, now I want to try a baritone ukulele. Yeah. And they discover the kind of the mellow sound and everything, and it's lovely and everything else. Um, but really good reason if you're at the beginning of the journey and you sing, mm. yeah, yeah, you've got those chances to change the key you're playing but keep your normal chord shapes. Yeah. So great reason. I was thinking, can you detune a ukulele down... Not really, no. because there's not enough tension. No, I, mean, I know some people do go down to like um, one note down and things like that, but yeah. the tension just, you know, they just comes a bit floppy. They're made for the tension of those tunings. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think it really works. It's, no. I mean, you can tune a guitar down, but you can only go down so far. Yeah, yeah. Because um, otherwise the neck's going to, you know, the tension's keeping the neck straight and yeah. all the other jazz stuff. So, um, the other reason, so it fills in the gaps between soprano cons, concert and tenor, standard tuning ukulele, mm -hmm. and the bass. Yeah. Um, now, this is, the kind, this is kind of the point that we make when we talk about the baritone, because yeah. I always say in the band, you've got those higher up instruments and you've got a bass, and the baritone just fits nicely in between the two. Yeah. The very quick point that James makes that really kind of cemented it for me is if you think of an orchestra, Mm -hmm. uh, and you think of a ukulele orchestra on a ukulele band. Yeah. So you've got your first violins, which are, let's say, they're your soprano violins. Yeah, yeah. But your second violins could be your concert. Um, soprano ukuleles could be your concert ukulele. Yeah. Um, or your tenor. So you, you, your first two sections are your, your concert, soprano, or tenor mm -hmm. ukuleles. You've then got your bass section which yeah. is maybe a U bass or bass guitar or whatever bass instrument you want to use. This is the viola. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's a reason, but there's a, <laughs> this is viola. And, but there's a reason why violas were invented. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's and it's to, to fill, gap. it's to bridge the gap between the violins and the cellos. Yeah. And, you know, there's an overlap there. Mm -hmm. Violin in a low register is obviously overlapping with the viola, and a cello in a high register is overlapping with the bottom end of the yeah. viola. It's exactly the same. And so, you know, in orchestral music, you wanted that full sound. You need the viola. If you don't have the viola, you've got a big hole yeah, yeah. in the middle. Exactly the same with ukuleles in groups. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you've got a ukulele group, it's, 
vital yeah. to me to have baritone ukulele in there. Yeah. And, but I thought that was just such a really good way of putting it. Yeah, that is. That's really cool. nice way of putting it. And it, it kind of makes perfect sense yeah. in that scenario. I'm just wondering why you've written bread sandwich. Ah, bread, well... <laughs> That was how he described it. Bread, think of, um, okay. <laughs> so let's say. I thought you'd just written your lunch. Let's say you're, you're a small group and you've got somebody playing a soprano or a concert. Yeah. And then you've got a U bass. Yeah. It's a bread sandwich. It's no filling. No, Nothing in the middle. It's a bread sandwich. You've got the very top end, you've got your very bottom end. Bread sandwich. Yeah. Bread sandwich. I thought it was good. Bread sandwich. <laughs> I'd forgot about bread sandwich. Well done for. That's, all, that's all right. Um, Right, we had promised we're going to try and make this quick. I'm not sure we did promise that at the beginning. We just no. talked about how long the other one was, yeah. but we're going to make this I hope, you're, I hope you're comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have agreed with Bongo Boy that if it's over 30 minutes long, for every minute over, if you comment on the chat, I'm going to give you £10 out of his wage packet. I mean, he paid me this month. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I paid you this morning, but... Uh... <laughs> Anyway, next month it's coming next out month, next, oh, okay, month, next yeah. month. So end of, end of July, there's money up to be grabbed. <laughs> money up for grabs. Send us your account. If, I, if I keep talking and not shutting up like I normally do, then uh, there's definitely money going through. Um, so yeah, the reasons for playing the baritone. Yeah, I thought that was really good. good. Someone's ringing me. And then the other thing I wanted to add, which was part of the podcast, but I'm adding more onto this. Mm-hmm. So James talks about how to work out what chords you're playing on the baritone. Yeah. So, for instance, if you play me a C chord on there, um, if I play the same chord on here, it's a different chord. How do you know what you're playing? If you're, know, if you're so you... used to knowing that that's a C, yeah. and you haven't got a baritone conversion book with you yeah. or an app or anything else, how do you quickly work out what chord you're playing? So he does this whole thing about um, counting down and the fact that if you count down from 10, it's really easy. Mm-hmm. Easy. If you count down in letters, it's a bit harder. Yes. So if you count backwards, so count backwards from G. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. You have to think about that. Yeah. Whereas if you're counting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I nearly did that wrong. Right? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> if you count in numbers, it's easy. Letters, yeah. not so easy because we yeah, don't, cause we don't do it. it. <laughs> There's no, not generally a reason for doing it other than in music. Yes. Um, which it kind of makes a lot of sense in music. But you, if you play the piano, you visualize those Yeah. rather than actually thinking that you're doing the alphabet backwards, I think. So um, the reason he does that is... If you're playing, so if we go back to our fifth threat, mm-hmm. capo or barring, so that's our normal ukulele tuning. Um, the difference between that and open mm-hmm. on a baritone is a fourth lower. Mm-hmm. So because it's a fourth lower, that's four notes down, yeah. that would mean you have to count backwards. So if we say that our open string on there is an A, is an in-tune A normally, um, and we want to work out what our open string there is, yeah. we're going to go a fourth down and count four letters backwards. So we're going to go A, G, F, E. And that's an E note. Because that's a bit harder, go up instead. But if you go up, if you count five letters up, yeah. you'll get to the same note. Okay, yeah. So that's our A, five letters up. A, B, C, D, E. And that allows you to work out what you're playing. Works with chords as well. Yeah. So this is kind of, this doesn't help you kind of know what chords to play as such. Mm. It's a case of working out what that chord is on a baritone ukulele. Okay, yeah. So again, if you're playing a C chord, you're going to count five. <laughs> Ooh, five up. You're going to count nine. five up. Um, so C, D, E, F, G. So you now know that that's your G shape on a baritone ukulele. Yeah. So if I said an E7 on your ukulele, you still can't get it. Uh, 1201. No, 1202, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, is that very badly actually. <laughs> so that's your E7 shape. Yeah. What's that same chord going to be on this ukulele? So the E, F, G, A, B7. B7. So on this ukulele, baritone. That should be seven shape. Yeah. So 
that's one way of looking at it. And so it's l- the same chord shape that you're used to. It's the it's same chord you said, but it's a different chord. chord. And I think there's two schools of thought on this, and I'm not quite sure yet where I fall, mm-hmm. um, because I think I switch between the two, which you can make it a bit more complex. Yeah. Um, so one way of doing that is learning what all your normal shapes are on a baritone and trying to remember that. Mm-hmm. And um, the way he puts it, it's like learning a new language. Yeah. And you're not fluent in that language until you start joking in that language and dreaming in that language. Yeah. Baritone UK is the same. You can't just pick it up and straight away remember all of this stuff. You have to keep practicing it, working out those chords yeah. until you're dreaming baritone ukulele yeah. chords. Um, which, again, was another good way of putting it. So that's one way of doing it. So you'd work out and you'd say, right, mm-hmm. okay, that's an F shape. Mm-hmm. What is it on here? Mm. What is it on here, sir? F, G, A, B, C. Yeah. So that's your, your new baritone C shape. Yeah. That's one way of doing it. And that's what a lot of people, the way they work it out. So they learn new names for their chord shapes. Yeah. Um, if you're in a, a group situation and you need to play something really quickly, I think there's another way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. And that is to swap your numbers around. So if you're trying to work out what chord that is, you're going five up or four down. Yeah. If you want to take a chord name, as in a C chord, yeah. and work out what standard shape you should play to play a C chord on a baritone, mm-hmm. instead of going five up or four down, you can go four up or five down. Okay. I know this this makes it complicated, and I guess you have to pick which camp you're in. Yeah. So the reason I say this is, say you've got a piece of music at your ukulele group, and it says that your chords are C, F, and G. Mm-hmm. So on that ukulele, you say play C, an F, which is two zero one zero. You need to learn your chords, young man. And a G chord, which is the little arrow. Yeah, there we go. Right. I want to play those same pitches. Mm-hmm. On here, but they're going to be different chord shapes. Yes. So how do I how do I work that out quickly at my ukulele grip? Effectively, I do the transposition of the chords. Yeah. So I'm going to count four notes up. Yeah. So from a C chord, C D E F. F. So I know that my normal F shape is there. Play C chord. You're at tune C chord. There we go. F. Um, so I would quickly jot down, mm-hmm. instead of playing C, F, and G, I'm going to play an F from a C chord. F. F, G, A, B. I'm playing a B flat. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, and G. G, and I'm playing a C. So that's, it's a quick way of just doing those transpositions, jotting them down on your yeah. on your bit of music. If you're in that situation where, you know, you can't, you're getting muddled with the transpositions and everything else, yeah. just look at your music. You know, a lot of ukulele songs that groups play are going to have like three, practically everything we play has three or four chords yeah. in it. We don't do that much that no. expands out of there. It's actually quite easy. Just take a pencil, jot down. So what you're doing there is you're not, you're not learning the other way. Mm-hmm. So you're not learning that this is a C chord necessary. I guess you are by proxy. Yeah. Because you've got that written down over the C chord. So eventually you will pick that up. Um, but it's a really quick way of just jotting down those chords and being able to play along with everyone else on a yeah. baritone. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, I thought that was worth adding to James's. That was, yeah. A little bit. So James's way, working out the differences between them, five up, four down, my way to actually work out the equivalent chord shapes, mm-hmm. four up or five down. Like the baritone. Baritone. I, I love the baritone. I like the baritone. Um, it's funny enough that we're saying, you know, it's the viola, which also gets the, all the stick of the string instruments, all the yeah. jokes constantly made about viola players. Yeah. Um, I was. I find it quite funny that guitarists and other musicians quite... They, they treat the ukulele like the runt of the litter. They do, yeah. And call it a toy and everything else. Yeah. Um, but ukulele players kind of, um, before anybody says, no, we don't, we all love them, <laughs> you're lying, because I've heard you. I've heard <laughs> ukulele players. I heard ukulele players at Knuff last week yeah. make jokes about baritones. Oh, Paul, Paul does. Paul did it the other day. Well, it's not proper. <laughs> 
not proper ukulele, is it? Um, so I've heard you. So yeah, the baritone gets the bad press in no. the ukulele world. That's it's not fair. It's kind. Of, it's just. It's what happens, isn't it? You pass on the stick that you get from someone else. You yeah. pass on to the what you deem as, as slightly lower. Yeah. And, uh, but I love the baritone. It is possibly. It's my favourite finger pick. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because of that mellow sound. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good. Right. So, album review. Album review, yes. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to Trio by Jake Shimabakuru. <laughs> Jake yeah. Shimabakuru. Uh, Dave Do Preston. Do you know what? Everyone in the ukulele world mm-hmm. like, can pronounce his name can perfectly. pronounce his name perfectly. And we've been in the ukulele world for a little while now, and we, we still struggle. So, we're not there yet. No. We, we are not. We've not been accepted. No. Jake. Jake, Dave, and Nolan. <laughs> if you notice a lot of our other videos, we'll just call him Jake. Just Jake. With Dave Preston and Nolan Verner. Uh, and, yeah, it's it's not like any other ukulele album I've heard because a lot of them are covers and plinky plonky. Uh, oh. Well, I mean, they are. They're sort of, they're, it's, there's they not can much. be. They can be. If you go onto Spotify and you search for ukulele, you get yeah, some of these Disney ukulele albums and stuff. Yeah, and they're all... It's, it's mostly ukulele bands or just a single person playing yeah. ukulele. What's, um, so it's a trio. What's the instrumentation? So, yeah, there's Jake on ukulele, uh, which might be a baritone. Which, wouldn't know. it be brilliant if he was playing guitar? <laughs> He's playing drums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then Dave Preston on guitar, which is mostly electric guitar. Yeah. Uh, and then Nolan Werner on bass. Uh, cool. And then there's percussion and piano and all sorts so of things. So bits added into it as well, yeah. yeah. Not main bits, but yeah. they're just in there. Nice. Um, and it's made up of 13 songs, 12 originals, and one cheeky cover thrown in at the end. Cool. Uh, and it kicks off with the first song, which took me by surprise, because it has a slow build-up in a very sort of minor key as it comes in, and then it's full-on, very much reminds me of Royal Blood, because uh, wow. the bass coming in, and it's just... Yeah, I mean, I, I have had heavy. a little listen. I didn't listen to it as much as you have. Yeah, um, you really liked it, didn't you? I you really were, liked the album. You're a big yeah. fan. Um, I liked it. It wasn't kind of what I was expecting, but then I don't no. know what I was expecting. I guess because I've seen Jake and his live stuff, mm-hmm. and this seems a little bit more elaborate. Yeah, yeah. I think I used the word self-indulgent. I think that was a bit mean, actually. Yeah. But it's. It's clearly three people kind of enjoying what they're doing. And yeah. if you like it, then go along for the ride. It's a bit more sort of progressive music, as in it yeah. starts somewhere and it goes somewhere and it builds and it drops and it yeah. builds. And the whole album does that. Yeah. It's sort of, they've, they've put the tracks in a really nice order yeah. where it flows quite nicely between quite heavy stuff and then slowly brings it down. But har- mm. harmonically... From the bits I listened to, so it might not be throughout the full album, and I think there is a song on the end of the album, isn't there? But mm-hmm. it's um, it's not song structure. No. It's not kind of, you know, that you would relate an instrumental music. Sometimes you can still relate to almost like a verse chorus, but you might yeah. call it section A, section B, yeah. and then section A will repeat, like in jazz and things like that, yeah. where you'll have kind of a head and a lead sheet, and you play through the head, and then you solo, and then mm. you go back to the head. Um, yeah, it's not like that. It's, it's not like that. It's, it's very organic. And it? it just flows yeah. from one kind of rhythm, one melodic idea or one harmonic idea. Yeah. And they'll do that for a while and then it will progress onto something slightly different or a variation of that. Yes. So it's quite, even though it's there's some rocking it's elements to it, it's quite calming, isn't it, I find? It is. It, well, it can be, yeah. And it's, it's nice to just sit and listen to and... I've, I've been listening to it in the car, I've been listening to it in the office, uh, I've been listening to it while just reading. Like, it's a really nice thing to listen to because if I think. If only it's... you'd spent as much time learning your chord <laughs> shapes as you have listening to ukulele music recently. Yeah. I know some chord shapes. So, right, you're Bongo Boy, you're not ukulele yeah, I'm, boy, are you? No, so... I'm going to start doing a Bongo section in this. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Buy, yeah. Buy a new set of Bongos every week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's. Yeah, it's got a lot of different influences there's jazz music and jazz chord progressions and things in there there's latin stuff there's uh, a bit of country thrown in there wow 
I yeah. didn't hear the country track. No, the country track is, is very... Um, I'm going to go and listen to that straight away after this. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, it's, it's a it's a good album, isn't it? I mean, it it's is. it's obviously very professionally recorded. It sounds yeah. great. That's yeah. sometimes my issue with some ukulele stuff when you're just searching on a music service. Yeah is you don't really know what you're getting and sometimes you have to kind of skip through a lot of mm. badly recorded stuff. For my yeah. point, I mean, you know, it's what I do. So, yeah. but, and that kind of frustrates me a little bit with you playing music online. Yeah. Is there seems to be a lot of skipping through stuff that the quality is not quite there yeah. to get to good stuff. And hopefully we're helping you with some of these music reviews. Yeah, so we'll, fingers crossed. We'll yeah, the production on. on this is top yeah. notch. Really, really good. Again, let us know. I think we've got some ideas from last week, but let Maybe. us know if um, there's anybody you think we should review. Yes. Or if you're an artist and you're releasing something new, yeah, send, send it over to us because we'd it. love to do some uh, music reviews. I'd love to listen to it while I'm meant to be working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, that was quite a short show. That was a short show. We haven't finished yet. Have we? No, we've got we've got one <laughs> bit. We've got one bit to add on quickly, which is um, Nicola Bragg Hart. Yes, who is now a member of our ukulele anarchy and ukulele family. Yes, she, she doesn't is. want to be. We've just adopted her. <laughs> yeah, we've just put her on the end of our logo. <laughs> we've, we've forced her to be in the band, and um, so Nicola has been raising money for cancer research. Yes, and she has been. Uh, recording herself doing a song a day mm -hmm. for all of June. So today is the last day to give. And so there's a link which we will either put up here or in the comments or both. Yeah. Um, we'll put it in the comments. If you're watching the premiere, we'll put it in the comments. Yeah, we'll put it in the comments now. This is a reminder and to us to put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Her, if you go to Instagram, her account is... Nicolaley? Nicolaley.music. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Again, we'll put that in the comments. I hope I haven't just got that wrong. Just double check. <laughs> double check. Bang ball, I talk. So nickelady.music, I think. And um, she's been raising money. She's done a brilliant job. She wanted to raise £500. She's on £708 as we speak. Nickelady. Filming this. Yeah. Nickelady.music, yeah. Yeah. And um, I would love to get her to £800. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can give anything at all, We've got a couple of quid. Um, go over to her Instagram or the link directly to her funding page. Yep. Um, she's also doing a relay race tomorrow. So she's done 30 <laughs> days of videos yeah. and doing a song a day. So please go and have a look at those. Um, she's also doing a relay race, race tomorrow with her team, which mm -hmm. is her family. Nice. And it's a 24-hour relay oh, race oh. around a local park to us. Yeah. And... Um, Somebody from her team has to be doing the, the race at all times during the 24 hours. So they take it in shifts. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a big deal for, for Nicola mm -hmm. and Nikki because um, she is a survivor of cancer, yeah. um, as is her dad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was reading, if you go on there and you, you read her a little bit about it, and, you know, it affects her life massively and has been a constant in her life really yeah. and even to the point that um, her children have to be tested regularly because of her history with cancer yeah. and you know and I think there has been issues there as well that they're well on top of but yeah. you know that's that's a daily yeah. thing to go through so please 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 go and have a look at Nikki's page yeah. and um, give it a like give it a share if you can spare anything at all Please donate. Yeah. And uh, let's see if we can get her over the £800 mark. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what fantastic a fantastic thing to do. Well. Oh, it is, yeah. It's brilliant. And she will be, we're going to get her back in for some videos over the summer as well. We haven't told her yet. No, no. But, yeah, if you're but, watching. I don't, I don't think we've spoken to her since the last gig, which is really bad, but. Um, <laughs> I've spoken to her. Have you? Oh, good. I've messaged her a couple good, of times. We've just been a bit busy. But, um, yeah, we are going to go in and hopefully she's going to come and play some gigs with us. Yeah as well and um but she's brilliant she's doing solo stuff as well and she's brilliant at that yes awesome thank you for watching slightly shorter than last week the same 10 minutes yeah slightly shorter i think you might have lost a few pounds uh, i'm editing this i'm not talking in weight <laughs> <laughs> thank you for noticing. we've been here that long we've we've both lost a stone um and um yeah and we'll see you next week we will 
Don't forget okay. to like, subscribe, and... We can't ring the bell because Jesse's stolen the bell. He was in with me on Saturday, and I remember him ringing it, and we yeah. cannot find it anywhere. I've looked. I've yeah. looked everywhere. And I know from experience at home, when I ask him, where did you put the bell, he's going to have absolutely no clue whatsoever. Yeah. So um, we need a new bell. If anyone wants to send us a bell, we need a new bell. So like, subscribe, ring the bell. Ding! And uh, we'll see you next week.